Hi, this is Mr. Knowles, and this is an activity about finding prime numbers using a hundreds chart. In order to do so, we have to follow some steps. And they're the steps of Eratosthenes' sieve. So let's get started. You should have a hundreds chart already. If not, make sure you get one from your teacher. Here we go. If you've ever made cookies, you may have used a sieve to sift flour. A sieve is a device with a bottom that's full of tiny holes. It lets fine flour particles through, but retains the lumpy bits. Eratosthenes was an ancient Greek athlete, astronomer, and mathematician. His sieve doesn't sort out lumps of flour, it sorts out prime numbers. A prime number is a number that can be divided evenly only by one and itself. Divided evenly means that the result is a whole number with no remainder. So things that you will need, you'll need a pencil, you'll need a hundreds chart, and you'll need four different colored pens, markers, highlighters. I prefer my students to use colored pencils or crayons, and the colors we'll be using are yellow, red, green, and blue. And what are you going to do? When you mark your hundreds chart according to the steps that follow, you'll reveal all the prime numbers in the chart. At the same time, you'll discover patterns that will help you remember the multiplication table. All right, let's get started. Step one, using your pencil, draw an X through the number one on your hundreds chart. The number one is a special number. It's not prime because a prime number has to be evenly divisible by two numbers, one and itself. The number one is divisible by only one number, one. So it's not prime. That may seem picky, but mathematicians are like that sometimes. So I'm going to go to my hundreds chart. I'm going to put an X through it. Step two, look at the number two. The number two is prime because only two numbers can be divided into it evenly, one and two. Circle the two with your pencil. So on my hundreds chart, I'm going to circle the two with my pencil. Step three, using your yellow marker, draw a vertical line through the center of the box the number two is in. All right. Now we're going to find all the other multiples of 2 in the chart and draw the same yellow vertical line through each of them. So I'm going to put a line through 4, a line through 6, a line through 8, a line through 10, a line through 12, a line through 14. Oh, I noticed something. I can actually draw a line all the way down because all the even numbers are in columns. So I'm going to do that. Well, that seems pretty easy. Oops. And now I'm at step five. At the bottom of your chart, you'll find a place to create a key to help you remember what the different colors indicate. Draw a yellow vertical line through the box labeled multiples of two. Any number that has a yellow vertical line through it is a multiple of two. So at the bottom, down here, there's that area. We're going to build a key, and that represents multiples of two. All right. Look at the next number in the top row, 3. Is 3 a prime number? It is, because it can be divided evenly only by 1 and 3. Circle it with your pencil. So I'm going to circle the number 3. Step 7. Using your red marker, draw a diagonal line across the box containing the number 3. 
make that the diagonal from the bottom left corner to the top right corner. So I need the red. I'm going to use my pink highlighter. Using the red marker, draw the same diagonal through all the multiples of 3. 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. Ooh, I'm noticing a pattern. 24, 27, 30. I could just draw lines like this. Wow, that, that's a cool pattern for the number three. Let me see if I missed any. Uh, 57, 60 is. That must mean 69. That must mean 78, and 87, and 96. Um, every three, 87. 88, 90 would have it, and 99. That's a really cool trick I just discovered. Step 9. In the key at the bottom of your chart, draw a red diagonal line through the box labeled multiples of 3. All right. Notice that some boxes in your chart have both a yellow vertical line and a red diagonal line. These numbers are multiples of both 2 and 3. Oh, I didn't do that for the number 2. I better do it for 3 and 2. So 6 has that in it. 15 has that in it. 30 has that in it. And multiples of 2, 6 have that in it. And 30 is a multiple of 2 because it's even. It's also on my chart up above. Good. Doing good. Doing awesome. We're at step 10 now. Continuing along the top row of the chart, notice that 4 is already marked with a yellow vertical line. I'm going to look up there. Yep, it is. Rem reminding you that it's a multiple of 2, so it can't be a prime number. The next number is 5. It's prime, so circle it with your pencil. All right, I did that. Using your green marker, draw a vertical line through the 5. Draw this green line a little left of center so that you don't cover up any of the yellow lines that you drew for multiples of 2. So I'm going to use green. All right. Find all the multiples of 5 in your chart. Draw the same green line through each of them. 5, 10, 15, 20, aha, 30. There's a pattern. I just have to go straight down because 5 has its own column, and all the 10s are in a column. And we're going to repeat the same thing we did for the 2s and the 3s for the 5s. So 5 is a multiple of 5, 10 is a multiple of 5, 15 is a multiple of 5, 30 is a multiple of 5. Awesome, I'm starting to get the hang of this. The number 6 has already been marked. So we're going to move on to the number 7. Number 7 is prime because it's empty. So we're going to circle it. Using your blue marker, draw a diagonal line across 7. This time, draw the diagonal line from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. So it doesn't cover up that diagonal you drew for the multiples of 3. So blue. I think I got blue. Yep. Find all the multiples of 7 in the chart and draw the same blue diagonal line through each of them. So multiples of 7, 14, 21, 
28, 35, 42, 49, 56, 63, 70, 77, 84, 91, 98, There's really no trick for multiples of 7, but you might discover a pattern. In the key below, we're going to put a, do, a blue diagonal for all the multiples of 7. Continuing along the chart, you'll notice that 8, 9, 10... Let's look at the chart for a minute. ...are already marked. There are no prime numbers left in the top row. All the numbers that haven't been marked yet are the remaining primes between 1 and 100. Circle them all. So the remaining ones that have no, no lines in them are prime numbers. So now I can go through all of these and circle them. So a question for you is, how many prime numbers are there between 1 and 100? You should get the same answer as everyone else in your group if you follow the steps correctly. So complete this worksheet with the hundreds chart on it. You may have some other assignments that go with this from your teacher. So if that's the case, use this completed hundreds chart with the prime numbers on it to complete those activities. I hope this has been helpful to you in finding prime numbers on a hundreds chart. If you have any questions, please ask.